Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, which many of you know and love so much. I'm happy to be here today. I hope you are as well. We are one of two Unitarian churches in Edmonton, and we offer our services and our programs in person and online. If we have any guests, we welcome you. My name is Oksana Atwood. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the service leader this morning, along with several others running the service behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. So let me turn to them and ask about any announcements. I know we have an announcement from Susan Rattan and as well as from Reverend Rosemary. Yes, this is an announcement uh, on behalf of the volunteers who run the food bank here on Wednesday nights. Um, we're out of reusable bags and the, the food bank people who come for the first time don't know they're supposed to bring bags. And uh, so I've donated all my extra bags. I've brought in some plastic bags, but those cloth ones are better because they're taking quite a few. If you have any that you could donate, there is a food bag boxed in the hallway there. It isn't supposed to be for bags, but if you put them there, I'll watch for them and take them into our closet. Thanks. Finally, somewhere to put all the growing bags that are live in my closet. <laughs> Good morning. My name is the Reverend Rosemary Morris. It is my pleasure and honor to serve this congregation. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm really happy to be here. And I want to invite you all here in the sanctuary and those of you online, and if you've seen it on Facebook and Instagram, tomorrow evening at uh, Brewster's anytime after 5.30 or 6 for a meal, for a cup of tea, for anything, mostly just to, for uh, getting to one, know one another. I will be there by 5.30, so um, at Brewster's on, in Unity Square. Uh, they will have some, a space there for us that, uh, they have a space there for us where we can gather and visit with one another and get to know each other in a, in a more relaxed and informal way, and no one has to do the dishes. <laughs> so the Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal religious community. We are self-financed and congregationally directed church. Our church is a member of the Canadian Unitarian Council, or CUC. We believe that every aspect of nature is related to every other. We value these interrelationships in our natural world and amongst ourselves, while also celebrating the uniqueness of human beings, cultures, faiths, and ideas. We acknowledge that the area in which we're meeting, both in person and online, are locations that might be in Treaty 6. If you are online and in another area and would like to share a different land acknowledgement, please do so. This area has been home to various Indigenous and Métis settlements for centuries. Truth and reconciliation calls us to make active changes. So today with our theme, let us strive to learn from stories of residential school survivors and make changes that create equity and justice in what we consider to be our communities. Whether you are in our online community, here in the sanctuary, or watching this in the future, we hope you find something in the stories, songs, symbolism today that warms your soul. Today our theme is telling our stories. We know that stories are what we remember and what we love. They hold our memories. As we move forward with building and strengthening our community, we want to know what is vital to remember, what will serve justice, what will build community. Our services follow monthly themes and are augmented by online and in-person Soul Matters small groups that delve into the theme even more. As we prepare for this service, we ask you to quiet your devices and to settle yourself as we open the service now with a musical prelude by Karen. Thank you.
Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> and now for our chalice lighting, an important ritual to both open and close our service today. Um, and today I might ask uh, Mike Mudry if you might come up and light the candle for us today. We have a reading by Sam Trumbor, adapted by our own Reverend Morrison. O light of life, be kindled again in our hearts as we meet together this morning to celebrate the joy of human community, seeking a wholeness that extends beyond ourselves, hearing the stories that create connection and help us to make and understand our differences. Please rise as you're willing and able for our first hymn, hymn 360, Here We Have Gathered. time when we have um, a bit of a spiritual reflection from the service leader and it's a part I really enjoy. With our theme today I really had thought about um, crafting a story <clears throat> and I, I, I really imagined weaving this beautiful story and bringing in things that we talked about over the last few weeks um, but storytelling isn't linear. Um, sometimes stories don't make sense, and if I've learned anything from Indigenous storytelling, um, that linear method of storytelling isn't always even appropriate. So as I look back over the last month at our different services and the different topics we've discussed, um, I kind of brought out a few symbols, and I think it's the symbols that I'd, I'd prefer to reflect on. They're kind of analogies. <clears throat> So storytelling and community are connected. Stories aren't just narrated. They're not just spoken, written, acted, or drawn. Storytelling is also a way of listening and learning from others. And we do that from a really young age. So I, I was thinking of these five symbols as a way of telling stories. And the symbols are Lego, roots, songs, circles, and our church building. And I want to show with each of these analogies how storytelling can strengthen our church community. The first analogy is Lego. Lego is a toy that consists of interlocking plastic bricks that are used to create shapes and structures. They're fun, they're creative, they're painful to step on, but it's also a storytelling tool. When we play Lego, when I see Freddie playing Lego, for example, we're sharing stories. We're creating and sharing stories and seeing other people's stories. And from a really early age, Lego teaches us to be curious, inventive, and collaborative. And this is one of the tools that we used about four or five weeks ago in one of our activities. The next analogy is roots, paths or roads that lead us from one place to another. Roots can be literal or metaphorical. We use roots to travel, explore, and discover new places and experience, and so roots are also stories. When we tell our stories, we share our journeys, our challenges, our joys, and our learnings. And we learn from other people's journeys. 
So roots teach us to be adventurous, resilient, and compassionate. The third analogy is songs, musical compositions that combine words and melodies, beautiful piano playing. They can be powerful and emotional, but they are also stories. And when we sing songs, we express our feelings, our hopes, our fears, and our dreams. And when we listen to other people's songs, we can empathize with their emotions and their stories. So songs teach us to be expressive, hopeful, and harmonious. The fourth analogy is circles, shapes that have no corners or edges. They're simple and elegant and symmetrical, and circles can also be stories. And when we tell stories in circles, we create a space of, of trust and equality and inclusion, a belonging and an acceptance. So circles can teach us as a community to be respectful, inclusive, and supportive. And the last analogy is our church building. Our church building is a beautiful physical structure that houses our worship, our fellowship, and our service activities. It's functional, it's beautiful, it's also sacred. Our church building can also be a story. When we look at our building, we can see the history, the vision, and the mission of our church. We can also see the stories of the people who built it, who use it, who care for it. Our building teaches us to be faithful, visionary, and mission-oriented. So in conclusion, storytelling and community are closely related and beneficial to each other. When we look at the symbolism of building, navigating, singing, and, and coming together, storytelling can help build community, and community can help us to tell stories. We'll just take a moment as we go into the next, um, the next part of our service, which is sharing our abundance. Um, and I might just ask to uh, volunteers to help us with that as we move forward in the next section of our service. <clears throat> You'll notice people coming around um, with bath baskets to collect, uh, to collect money. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is, is a liberal religious community. As I mentioned, it's self-financed, it's congregationally directed. And generosity is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and our institutional well-being. For the month of February, we are sharing our abundance with iHuman. And this is an organization that works in, in inner Edmonton. And often um, I've come across job postings. And of all the job postings that are out there, iHuman seems to have the most compassionate, the most progressive, the most open-minded um, positions because of the type of work that they do working with young people. <clears throat> By donating today, this is a direct way to have a positive impact on the lives of congregants and community members. E-transfers are also gratefully accepted with information on how to do so on our website. We thank you for your generosity and your support. With time, our talents, and our money, we support the work of the community and this Unitarian Universalist tradition. We will now receive the offering. have the hymn of the month, the beautiful song, Be the Light by Leah Morris. So if we could ask you to, to rise as you're willing and able for the hymn of the month, Be the Light. So. <laughs> Am I on? Yeah. Great. So I will sing it annoyingly into the microphone for you so that um, <laughs> you can uh, follow along a little easier. However, it, um, I do want to admit I am not a professional singer. So there we go. Uh, so the way it's going to go is there's kind of two parts to this. There is always the light when we are ready to see it. And then there's a second part that starts with shine your light in the darkness. So we're just going to sing it through a few times all the way through. Uh, we're not going to try to put it together today because it does go together in kind of a roundy kind of harmonious beautiful music making and I don't think we're quite there yet so that's just my guess I could be wrong you might surprise me and decide you're gonna do uh, put the parts together all right there is always the light you want to bring us in Karen
So that, the words for that song are from, um, I don't know if you remember the Biden inaugura inauguration and that fabulous young woman who wrote um, a poem and presented it at Biden's inauguration. And that, um, those words are from that by Amanda Gorman. So if you were at the board meeting on Wednesday, you heard this poem that I'm going to use for the meditation today. And you probably are going to go, yay, because it was so, it's so beautiful and it needs to be repeated over and over. And it is full of stories. So the way the meditation is going to go today is I will, do kind of in, a, in the usual way, I'll ask you to center yourself and focus in on your breathing and relax. Um, we'll have, I'll read the poem, Small Kindnesses by Danusha Lamary. We'll have a little bit of silence. I'll read it again. We'll have a little bit of silence. And then we'll be going into our meditation hymn, Dark of Winter. And that, those words will show up on the screen behind me. I just want to thank you before I go move on for for singing that song so great. I just love to hear it. I lo it was wonderful, wonderful to hear. Thank you. So in the spirit of meditation, I invite you to rest your eyes in whatever way that feels comfortable for you. Soften your gaze. Take a couple of deep cleansing breaths in and out. It is the breath that feeds us, that nourishes us, that brings life-giving air. And we take what we need from it, and we let go of the rest. A metaphor for all of our lives, for all parts of our lives. We accept what we need, we bring into us what we need, and we let go of all that we no longer need. I invite you to follow that breath as it goes into your lungs. Can you feel it? Do a little body scan as we've got some tension and breathe into that, any aches and pains. Let your body rest in the chair, on the couch, on your bed, on the floor, where it is, wherever it is, the earth is holding you. Let the gravity pull you. Let your muscles relax. And take a few more breaths. I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs to let you by. Or how strangers still say, bless you, when someone sneezes. A leftover from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly. We don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to the person handing it. To smile at them and for them to smile back. For the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder. And for the driver in the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other now. So far from tribe and fire. Only these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwelling of the holy? These fleeting temples we make together when we say, Here, have my seat. Go ahead. You first. I like your hat.
I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs to let you by. Or how strangers still say bless you when someone sneezes. A leftover from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly. We don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to the person handing it, to smile at them and for them to smile back. For the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder and for the driver of the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other now. So far from tribe and fire. Only these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwelling of the holy? These fleeting temples we make together when we say, here have my seat. Go ahead, you first. I like your hat. As we do with each service, we light candles of joy and concern. The candle stations are ready for you to light your candle, to share with us a moment of what is going on for you in your life. May you find comfort and exception in this wonderful ritual that we now will do together. The candle stations are open. I invite you.
Thank you, Oksana. If you could light one last candle for all the joys and concerns that remain within us. And I believe, without further ado, our Carrie Newcomer, writing a better story for your... We could have the chancel lights off, please. Recording in progress. There we go. I sang along. I hope you did too. A little bit. Yeah. Did you sing along in the chorus? So that's Carrie Newcomer, and she works with um, Parker Palmer. You may know one or the other of them. She's an Indiana, a person from Indiana and lives in Indiana. And I was introduced to her during um, my seminary in Vancouver. And I'm a bit of a fangirl. And then imagine my surprise when I said, someone said to me, yeah, Carrie Newcomer is going to be at the library in this little wee dinky town next to the little wee dinky town that I was living in. And I went, what? Carrie Newcomer? Anyways, I went, and uh, she lives in Indiana, and I got to uh, go to several of her little intimate little concerts in small venues and got to a chance to meet with her as well. An absolutely wonderful person. She's got a lot of records. I... Um, um, I was talking to someone about music being a spiritual practice, and I'd say that Carrie Newcomer is certainly part of, on the, the uh, playlist of my spiritual practice when it comes to music. So I invite you to listen to some of her, her music. I find her quite inspirational. The reading this morning is by Carol Pearson from her book, The Hero Within, Six Archetypes We Live By. At the beginning of the classic hero myth, the kingdom is a wasteland. Crops are not growing. Illness is rampant. Babies are not being born. And alienation and despair are pervasive. The fertility, the sense of life, has disappeared from the kingdom. A more youthful challenger goes on a journey, which transforms the challenger, whose treasure is the discovery of a new and life-affirming perspective. When the hero returns, fertility and abundance are restored. Rains fall, nourishing part, rains, fall, rain falls, pardon me, nourishing parched ground. Crops spring up, babies are born, the plague is cured, and people feel hopeful and alive once more. Heroes, then, are not only people who grow and change and take their journeys, they are also agents of change. The hero's task has been to bring new life to an ailing culture. In ancient times, societies were governed by kings and queens. Today, however, we prize the achievement of democracy. Yet living in egalitarian society carries with it responsibilities. Instead of only exceptional people going on the quest, we all need to be doing so. Heroism today requires us all to find the treasure of our true selves and to share that treasure with the community as a whole through doing and being fully who we are. To the degree that we do so, our kingdoms are transformed. That's the end of, this, of the quote. Thinking about Carrie Newcomer and she, uh, the, the song that we just heard, she talks about the, in the music video that we watched this concept of writing a new ending and creating a new storyline. So we can write a different ending to the story, be it of our lives, of our project at the time, at the success of our business or of our job, anything really. If we are unhappy with the story that we are living with, even part of the story, some of us are happy with all of our stories, some of us happy with some of our stories. Oh, I'd be surprised if any we were happy with the entirety of our stories as we're moving through life. But we can write a new ending and create 
a new storyline. We simply need to open up our minds, allow ourselves to get creative, perhaps think outside of the box, as they say, or simply decide that we're fed up with the way things are going and then make some changes. We are also made up of all of the stories we've been told about our ancestors, our birth and infancy, and most importantly, we are made up of our own experiences. We've all had them. Stories of when we disappointed others or were disappointed, special occasions, meeting someone we ended up falling in love with or loving, giving birth to a child, having someone close to us die. The examples can go on and on. The other part of stories, and Oksana alluded to that this morning, is that the oral tradition is what we had. All the indigenous peoples, we just, we just had the stories. We passed them on from person to person. And that carried us from being primitive or semi-whatever primitive means to in hunter-gatherer society, sitting with tribe, and by the fire, as Danusha Lamaris puts it, to the complex modern society that we live in today. One where we no longer pass orally, pass our stories down orally from one generation to the next, or not only we pass them down orally, we, we record our stories for others to read in books, articles, journals, and now on the internet. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it happens to me sometimes. I'll be reading a book, and I could be a page in, a chapter in, 20 pages in, 100 pages in, and then someone tells a story in the book, and I'll go, oh, I know this story. I've read this book before. But I didn't realize I'd read the book until I read that particular story. It's stories that grab our attention and grab our imagination. But, you know, I hadn't figured out that I'd read the story, that book before, so I usually just continue reading the book and because I didn't remember a darn thing about it, except for the story. Stories are what we remember. The reading by Carol Pearson got us thinking about the hero's journey, the journey that brings life and abundance back to the community that is ailing, that is suffering. As she said, today the hero's journey is more in line with the ideology of rugged individualism that is hoisted upon us at every turn. What's in it for me? What can I put on Facebook where I'll get lots of likes and loves? How different that is from the attitude of believing that we are only as great as the community that we serve. When I lived in Victoria, I trained as a birth doula and practiced being a birth doula for a few years. I went to a conference in Seattle with my daughter. Then she now is a a fully registered midwife and is managing the midwifery program for all of Yukon. But then she was a student midwife. I said that as a proud mom, didn't I? (laughs) Proud mom moment. Uh, So her and I, we were lucky enough to go to a seminar presented by the I Consider Great Penny Simkin, co-founder of Doulas of North America. One thing she said in that seminar that's always stood out in my mind, she said, anyone who has given birth will always remember their birth story, or at least parts of it. Therefore, it is up to us as doulas to make sure that they have the most most positive birthing experience they can have. I think we can extrapolate that to the concept that all our important stories stick with us to some degree. We don't have to have given birth to a human for this to be true. That is why I dare to say it is so important how we greet one another, how we treat each other, and how we support one another For as Danusha Lamaris said, therein is the holy temple, is these brief exchanges. It's all we've got, the exchanges we have with one another, now that we've moved away from tribe and fire. 
It is in these exchanges that our memories are built, our feelings are about ourselves are developed, and our stories are written. And we've got a pretty good story going on here, don't we? We could call it the Great Roof Capades of 2024. I am very happy about and impressed by the way so many people have stepped up and helped out with the roof cleanup, signing up to be rain catchers, thank you to all the rain catchers, being flexible and getting creative. It is in these kinds of stories that stand out in the life of the congregation. It is these kinds of stories that stand out in the life of a congregation. If you've been here a while, and I know that some of you online have been here a while, I would guess that there are many other stories that you can remember. I would venture a guess that buying this building and then renovating it is one of the biggest stories in the life of this congregation. The great roof capades of 2024 might come in second as we go forward. How many of you were here when we, you built this building? Show of hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Andrew, yes. <laughs> that was the ooh, ooh, up, I think, from coming up there. And how many of you helped with creating this space and other spaces that are used by our congregation and our renters? You swung some hammers, I think. And ooh, ooh, up there, two heads up, our project manager, Andrew, uh, staffing our, our table up there, our uh, sound system, etc. Producing. I could talk about stories all day. It's kind of like talking about going for a swim and then actually swimming. They don't actually, it doesn't actually work. You can't just keep talking about swimming. If we're going to talk about stories, you need to tell your story. Now, we don't have time for each of you to come up to the microphone and tell an important story of your life. But I'd like to give all of you an, import, a t an opportunity to tell one other person an important story in your life, something that has formed you, something you may not have ever told anyone, something you've told lots of people. It could be when a new family member arrived, or about when you helped create this space, or when you were in the singles club that used to be part of this congregation. I think there's some good stories from that. <laughs> I've seen some of the pictures. I'd love to hear some of the stories. It could be your favorite meal out or making a birthday cake for a loved one. It could be about your pet, bringing, bringing your new pet home. It could be something very profound or something as ordinary as going for a walk and marveling at the sky and the colors. We need to tell one another our stories and we need to hear the stories that dwell within our community. In just a moment, I'd like to ask you to put yourselves in knee groups of two. Three, if, there isn't, if there's a person left out. Don't leave anybody out that wishes to share. Um, you'll have about five minutes, I think. I can't tell what time it is. Uh, so two to three minutes for each of you. And so as you sit, and I'll just give you a minute to sit and think about what story you want to tell one other person. You could uh, tell the person beside you. You could decide you, um, that you want to tell the, your story to someone that is not beside you. So move your chairs. And as always, this is by invitation, not by demand. Online, you will be put into groups, uh, breakout rooms of two or three, depending on the numbers. And so, have you thought of a story to tell? Are we ready on Zoom for the breakout rooms? You can go ahead and put people in the breakout rooms anytime. Okay, let's count down. Five. I just told a joke, and it was inappropriate. Okay, stories desire to be aired out from time to time. We, we can't leave them in the drawers of our minds forever. They'll get musty and moldy, as it were. 
Our stories are what we have create, what have created us, have made us who we are. May you be proud of your stories. May you live into the story that you wish to. And may you let go of a story that no longer serves you. So may it be. Amen. And let us sing our closing song, Building a New Way, hymn 1017 in the Teal Hymn Book, and the words will happen behind me. And uh, it's got a bit of a beat to it, so you are welcome to move and clap on two and four. of our service, I'd just like to extend a thank you to um, all the many volunteers who have put together this service and who are working behind the scenes. I'd like to just uh, reiterate the announcements this morning. There was a call for reusable bags for our food bank and a reminder about UU on tap coming up shortly. If I could ask uh, Mike to come up as we extinguish the flame part of our closing ritual. This is a reading um, adapted, uh, a reading called I Send You Out, adapted by, uh, adapted by Kelly Wiseman Aspruth Jackson's original writing. I send you out now to share yourself with the world. May its promise and complexity set your mind ablaze. May you hold fast to what your life has taught you. May you question everything. Sorry. And when you've changed the world with your stories, and the world has changed you with its stories, may you return again to this place and share what you've learned with us. I would like to also add my thanks to Oksana for everyone that participated and contributed to this service. I'm so glad you were here in person and online. Without you, it doesn't work. So I'm glad you came this morning and shared your stories with us. And um, I bought cookies. So I expect there's cookies and coffee and things for you and, and have a little visit <laughs> after. Um, with each other after and continue telling your stories and I leave you with this benediction do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world things can break and things can be mended but not with time as they say with intention so go and love intentionally go and love extravagantly and go and love unconditionally. For the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is within you. 
Go in peace, gentle people. Go in peace and shine your light in the darkness. Amen. And let us join together in our linking song, Carry the Flame. If you haven't been here before, we make a circle or semicircle or windy circle or crazy wild circle. And we sing. The words will come up on the screen. But you don't have to hold hands if you don't want to. Okay, everyone, you should be able to unmute yourself. Certainly welcome to stick around for a while if you'd like.